I once participated in a, be in a building project when I went to a Fiji mission trip. It was myself, some other teachers and a bunch of high schoolers. And we did not do a fine job of the task that they asked us to do. They wanted us to build a baptismal font. They said, can you do it by Sabbath so we could have a baptism in there? We really wanted to help them. So we helped them build. But oh my goodness, it was falling apart as we were building it. Because every day, if you know Fiji, in the second half of the day, it would bucket down with rain. So every morning we would get up, shovel out buckets of water from this baptismal font and then continue to build it. The paint that we had painted it with was hardly dry by the time they filled it up with water on Sabbath. And the water was like a milky looking whitish colour because the paint that had been painted onto the walls of the font had now become part of the water of the font, plus the mud, plus the rain that was in there earlier. And we were really concerned for the people who were getting baptised in there and if their hair was going to come out with paint in it. But they were really happy that we built for them. I am not a builder. But God has called me to build other things for his kingdom. God has called me to build up his followers for his kingdom. And I wonder about you. I wonder what has God called you to build? The last thing that I know about Shira is that she leaves a legacy. One of the cities that she built is named after herself. It's called Azanshira. That tells us that she had to have been a woman of great wealth and status to have been able to name a city after herself because you don't just go and say, I think I'm going to name a town after myself. Most people would say, no, you're not. So if she would have had to have had some sort of status, some sort of ability and some sort of wealth to be able to do that. The, we don't have any traces of that city today, but we do actually still have in existence the two other cities, Upper and Lower Beth Horan, and you can Google them if you want to. They are twin cities about three kilometres apart. One is closer to the port and the other is closer to the mountains and they are divided by a pass. And the pass is referred to in scripture a number of times and they can't decide what the official name of it is because it's either called the ascent of Beth Horan or the descent of Beth Horan, depending which way you're looking at it from, I guess. It is on a trade route and it was the grounds of many battles over the centuries. You can still find these cities today in the modern cities, and I'll probably slaughter the way this is pronounced, Beit El Foka and Beit El Taha in Palestine today. And archaeological digs have been done under those cities and they have shown that the lower city was built first. There are two revolts that happen from these cities in the Maccabean period between the Old Testament and the New Testament. King Solomon fortifies the walls of the upper city so that it can be used in military purposes. It is built, it is rebuilt, and it is fortified several times in the Bible. It is mentioned in resources outside of the Bible as well. I'm pretty impressed with the legacy of these cities that stood the test of time built by Shira. But one of the more famous biblical accounts of these cities comes in Joshua chapter 10 and verses 10 to 14. So if you want to turn with me there, Joshua chapter 10 and verses 10 to 14. Joshua 10 verses 10 to 14. Joshua 10, 10 to 14 says this. And the Lord threw them into panic before Israel, who struck them with a great blow at Gibeon and chased them by the way of the ascent of Beth Horon and struck them as far as Azekar and Makedon. And they fled before Israel while they were going down the ascent of Beth Horon. The Lord threw down large stones from heaven on them as far as Azekar and they died. There were, two, there were more who died because of the hailstones than the sons of Israel had killed with a sword. At that time, Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord gave the Amorites over to the sons of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, sun, stand still at Gibeon and moon in the valley of Abidjan. And the sun stood still and the moon stopped until the nation took vengeance on their enemies. Is it not written in the book of Jashar? The sun stopped in the midst of heaven and did not hurry to set for about a whole day. There has been no day like it before 
or since when the Lord heeded the voice of a man for the Lord fought for Israel. Maybe you have heard of this battle or maybe you haven't, but it's about as magical and miraculous as the story of Jericho where the people didn't do anything but blow a trumpet and then the city was demolished. Here you have the sun standing still and God intervening. And it says that hailstones that came down from heaven killed more of the enemies of Israel than the Israelites actually did. In this story, it tells us that Joshua and the army had an ambush and there were the five kings of the Amorites who got together and they were going to take out the Israelites because they were not happy that they had come into their land. And they thought if we work together, we can get rid of these Israelites and their pesky God. But God showed up and in what would have been a two day pursuit of the enemy, God held the sun still so that it wasn't dark and that they could pursue their enemy. The sun stood still, stones and hail came from heaven. The enemy was annihilated. This famous battle was held between Shira's two cities. I love that. God gave her a legacy. God used her to build a sanctuary, to build safety, to build stability for his people in generations to come. Generations before Joshua was even born, before the Israelites had been liberated, had gone into slavery, had been liberated from Egypt, had gone into the desert and finally entered the promised land. There was a city that was already built for I want to prepare these cities for them in advance. Be part of the body of Christ. You are fully a child of God and you are able to serve in the capacity that he has called you. The second thing is that you are a child of promise when you believe in God Almighty and when you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. And if you don't know that Jesus died on the cross for you, I'm sure your pastor Letitia would love to talk to you about Jesus and about how to become a child of promise and to be a part of God's plan and to be a part of his future. The third thing is that she was an overcomer. And I want to encourage you, no matter the circumstances that you have faced in the past, don't let your past be prophetic about the future that is before you. God has a plan for you that your past doesn't have to hold on to, that you can step into with freedom, with courage, and with the spirit of God in your heart to be an overcomer. The fourth thing I want to tell you is to be a builder. I don't know what it is that God has put on your heart to build. It may not be a city. It might be people. It might be something in your community. It might be something that only you can do. And for me, the one thing that I have found is to figure out how God wants to use me, is to figure out what is the thing that really makes me burn on the inside, that makes me feel ferocious or furious or angry or passionate or frustrated then there is an injustice that God wants me to speak into in the world where I have those feelings that have come up. The next thing is that I want you to know is that you too can leave a legacy and I would encourage you to do that. There is a proverb that says, it's not in the Bible, it says the world is a great place when men plant the seeds of trees that they don't intend to sit under the shade of. Be the man or the woman who plants the seed of the tree that somebody in a generation to come can enjoy the shade of. That is what God wants each of us to do in the legacy that we build for the children and the generations to come in his kingdom. So I ask again, what has God put on your heart to build and what is the legacy that you will leave behind?